back to the channel real quick. I'm at a shop, I'm at another shop, and I wanna get this footage in right quick before I start this job. What I'm doing is, I came over to my buddy's shop. He has a big body Durango with 5.7 Hemi. All right, now, <laughs> they came in, a customer came in, he said, complaining about uh, noise. So my buddy, I guess, automatically thought it was engine noise and he don't really do uh, engine work so let me take this off and show y'all what I found first of all you can see the mess under here ladies and gentlemen that is all coolant okay now before you go assuming automatically that the coolant is coming from the water pump I highly suggest you uh, pressurize the system use a coolant pressure test and pressurize the system now, you were quite frankly, the leak will show up at the weakest point, which is probably, probably will be the water pump, but you wanna make sure. Now, one thing I highly suggest to him when I finally wrote up the estimate, by the way, I'm gonna replace the water pump. I highly suggest you get a brand new thermostat with it. And I also highly suggest that he get me, that's right baby, Mopar parts. This is a brand new Mopar water pump. Uh, high quality all right because I like to use high quality stuff and make sure you get the correct uh, coolant okay this uh, as you can see most of this is like orange looking so I can automatically assume they had the five-year orange coolant in it the new stuff uh, the 10-year coolant pretty much was used in the 2014 and higher model uh, Chrysler Dodge product so I am about to replace this water pump with this brand new Mopar water pump. Like I say, I highly suggest you get a new thermostat. Okay, so let me go over the noise that they was hearing, which made, which is the reason why I'm over here in the first place, because I'm almost certain my buddy could have done this water pump. This is the noise they was hearing that would make them believe or make them think it was engine work. Okay, you see this pulley? You should not be able to. Now I'm unable to start the car so you can hear the noise, but it was a loud growling noise. Arr! He thought it was engine noise, and uh, that's when he called me over. I do most of the day, uh, most all the engine and transmission work. Okay, so, but because I came over and diagnosed it, uh, I'll just go ahead and make the repair. But look at that. So if you're pulley doing this, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you need a water pump because. As you can see, this pulley is built onto the water pump. This is a high quality new water pump here. So this is the reason why the engine was making loud. Forget about if it was overheating, I guess. I don't guess it got to the point. I mean, that's a, looked like a large leak. It looked like it could have easily ran out of cooling and started overheating, but there's no complaint of a overheating nor a cooling smell. I mean, because this is setting off a strong cooling smell. All right, the only complaint from the customer was noise, engine noise. So I'm about to fix this. Now, replacing this is nothing fancy. Of course, I'm gonna get the fan out the way, remove the upper radiator hose, take the thermostat housing off, and from there is just nuts and bolts. And I also highly suggest you get a new belt. But, so I'm gonna try to film as much as possible, but there's nothing to it. Of course, the new water pump, all the bolts go in the hole. Make sure you line the bolts up. This is your first one. I suggest you remove a bolt, take it out, and put it in the spot you removed it from on the old alternator, all right? So you won't lose track of anything, all right? So that's all I have, man. I'm gonna get to replacing this water pump for this loud engine noise on this 5.7 Hemi. Ladies and gentlemen, so, we're at a point where I can show you something. Now, again, I'm just replacing the end button. Nothing spectacular, nothing fancy about it. Just, I got the fan out the way, of course. Remember I told you I had to remove the fan. Get the lower radio the hose off. Got it off right here. And uh, this tube, this uh, fluid transfer tube, make sure you be careful with the O-ring. Uh, I highly suggest you go on with a new O-ring, but if you don't have one, be very careful. And of course, it was held on by this little 10 millimeter bolt. Now from there, whoa, see that? That's what I know is. Wow. See, it was a little, it was tighter when the belt was on, but now you can really see. So the whole car was doing this. Wow. All right, so we at a point where we can start removing bolts. And ladies and gentlemen, like I said, if you're a newbie and you feel real, not so much a scared, but you're real picky or you being extra careful, I highly suggest you remove one bolt at a time. 
and simply take the bolt out of the, its place and just place it in the same spot of your new water pump. Such I'm gonna remove this one right here. It's above the cooling temp sensor. So you just take it out and place it right in the slot that go in. So that way you won't lose track. Now some of you veterans, it don't matter. You just have boats laying all over the place. But I'm talking to the uh, the newbies, the you know the guys just getting into automotive repair. I want you to be extremely careful. But again, that that had them thinking they had engine trouble. The, ladies and gentlemen, that's not engine trouble. That is bearing inside the water pump. That's all. All right, let's finish this water pump up. I'm gonna remove all the bolts and uh, go in with the new one, and that should about wrap it up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here. We have one more boat to go. Let's get it off. I chose to stay this one for last. Because it's it's long and it's stabbed into the block, so let's get that out, put it in, uh, in this right spot on the new water pump, and now let's uh, simply finagle this out of its place. And voila, here is the old water pump. Wow. That's what the engine sounding like. He thought the engine was shot. I don't think I've ever seen one that bad. If they'd have drove any longer, this would have simply sheared off and they would have stopped because you wouldn't have been able to go anymore. Remember, this right off the serpentine belt and it drives everything else. All right, let's get. All right, let me go over a couple of more things with you. Uh, as far as uh, safety and extra careful. Ladies and gentlemen, this radiator is extremely sensitive. You can easily be taken off a boat on here and jerk back and punch this and pssst, you're gonna have a leaking radiator. I highly suggest you put a piece of cardboard in front of this if you're doing any kind of work in the front of the radiator. I did a video on this a while back, man. I have had to replace plenty of radiators by just the slightest touch, just boop, and pssst, it's gonna, it's just gonna spray all out, man. It's extremely sensitive. So if you're gonna not put nothing in front of it, at least try your best not to bump into it in any way. All right, also, uh, another uh, issue I wanna cover with you. Make sure these bearings are good. Like this is the idler pulley. Make sure it's good, cause when coolant spill on these, uh, they tend to get noisy. So before you, if you're gonna reuse them, make sure they're good. Spin them and see if you hear any noise. Okay, and this Isla pulley and even this tensioner. All right, we about done, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna put the fan on, the thermostat and the hose on, and we're gonna go from there. And do not forget, uh, filling it back up with coolant, this is the bleeder screw we're gonna use, all right? So I'll go over that later. All right, let's get with it. So what you need to do after you make your repair, uh, it's time to refill your car with coolant. Now, this is a 2014 Dodge Durango. A 57 Hemi. Okay, every car has its own little way of bleeding. Uh, what you're trying to do is fill the car with coolant and, in the same process, uh, eliminate air pockets. Right. So the best way to do that is to bleed it. So here's this particular engine is equipped with a bleeder screw right here. So all we need to do is uh, loosen that bleeder screw, and we also want to make sure we're using the proper coolant. In this case, I have a 10-year coolant because this is a 2014 uh, Dodge Durango, it calls for the 10 year coolant. So always make sure you're going in with the right coolant. All right, this is brand new. I'm also using a bleeder funnel valve, so I got double protection. All right, so we simply fill this up, man, until the coolant comes out of the bleeder screw. And once it do, that should indicate uh, all the air pockets are out. All right. So simply fill it all the way up. Remember, I did a water pump, so you're gonna lose a lot of coolant in that process alone. Especially you do a radiator, you're pretty much gonna lose all the coolant. So there's no need to try to figure out how much coolant you lost. Just go in and refill it properly anyway. All right? So uh, my bleeder funnel is doing its job. Pretty soon coolant should be coming out of this bleeder screw sometimes you have to 
sometimes you have to take it all the way off. In this case, I don't want to take it all the way off. I want to just a couple of screws. All right, we sucked all that right in. So let me finish filling it up. Fill it up with more. Ladies and gentlemen, you have essentially removed uh, at least 90% of the air pockets. After you go drive it, that should uh, take care of the rest. But you don't want to uh, deliver the car to the customer with any air pockets. So go drive it and do your thing. Run the heater. Also, make sure you run the heater so all the cooling can flow through the heater core. And you make sure you get all the air pockets out of the cooling system. All right? That's it, man. That's all I have. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe. And I'll see y'all on the next video.